Hi, I'm Dr. from Matthews. I'm here today to give you a quick crash course on order of operations in math. So you need to know the orders of operation anytime you're doing a calculation that has multiple steps. And so the, the general order of operations is what is listed right here in this first column. And so what we have essentially is anything with parentheses is going to come first, and here are different forms of parentheses. So if you're working with any kind of formula and you see any of those three different versions of parentheses, that's the first thing you need to do. The second thing you need to do is you need to take care of all your exponents and your roots, so square roots um, and things like that. So they look like what you see here and here. The third level to this is going to be your multiplication and your division. And so if you see any of these symbols here, so this is the multiplication sign, this is the multiplication sign, it's probably the most common one. Also, if you have a parenthesis uh, without some sort of character between two letters or two um, numbers in a mathematical formula, that also means it's assumed to be multiplication between them. Same goes if there's two parentheses side by side like that. For division, we have the, the different division signs, the one that looks like essentially a fraction. We have the traditional division sign right there. And we also have the multiplication sign and the value is raised to the negative one exponent. That's also a form of division. So if you see something that looks like this right here, that's also division, so that's y divided by z. The last things you do in your order of operations are going to be your addition and your subtraction. And we all know these symbols, so it's the typical plus and minus sign. So we'll get to this in a little more detail um, later on, but whenever you're doing uh, a, a calculation and you have to rearrange the calculation in order to isolate something, you're actually going to reverse the order of operations and you're going to get this order of operations. So the one on the left is what you do when you already have everything in the order you want it and you just have to solve the equation. The one on the right is when you have to rearrange the order and then eventually you will solve the equation. All right, so let's go ahead and start with an example. So we have A equals B plus C times D times, remember the when we have a, a value right next to a parenthesis like that, that means multiplication as well. So um, times in parentheses e minus f. All right, so that is our formula. And um, we have our given values where a is the value we don't know and b equals two, c equals five, d equals four, e equals eight, and f equals three. Because we already have this equation isolating the value that we are trying to calculate, we don't need to rearrange the equation. We can just plug in the numbers and go ahead and solve for it. So. Plugging in those numbers, the equation looks like what we have right here. So remember, when you already have the equation set up the way you need to be set up, and you have your values plugged in, all you need to do is follow the order of operations for solving a calculation, so this left set of orders here. So the first thing we're gonna be doing are we're going to be solving for what's in the parentheses. So eight minus three, that's five. All right, so we solve for this right here. Now that we've taken care of the parentheses, we're gonna move down to our exponents and our square roots, and we don't have any in this equation, so we're just going to skip past that. And so we're gonna to go to multiplication and division. We have no division, but we do have multiplication. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, so we multiplied five times four times five, and the order of that doesn't matter, and that gives you 100. So now all we have left to do is the addition and subtraction. In this equation we have no subtraction, so we're going to do the addition. So we have 2 plus 100, so A equals 102. So that's a fairly straightforward equation. Uh, what though if we have this equation set up but it's not in the order we want it to be in. So let's go ahead and use the same equation, but instead of A being the value that we have as an unknown, let's make C our unknown value. So up until now, we've just followed this order of operations right here for solving an equation. However, now we need to rearrange the order of the equation. And so that order that we have right here actually reverses itself and we have to do everything backwards. So instead of starting with parentheses, we end with parentheses and we start with the addition and subtraction. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to look for the value that we are trying to isolate. In this situation, remember, we're looking for 
the answer to what C is. And so we have to isolate this C right here in the equation. And so doing the first step of this, getting rid of the addition or subtraction to that C. So that's important to note because we do have subtraction right here, but remember it's inside a parenthesis. And so because it's inside that parenthesis, it actually is going to come last, it doesn't come first. Um, but we have the C, we need to get rid of this B right here. And so right now it's B plus C. So we're just going to uh, remove the B from one side of the equation, put it onto the other side of the equation, and essentially flip the sign. And so really what you're doing here is you're subtracting B from both sides of the equation. So essentially you do the opposite function of whatever level you are currently working at. So if you have addition, you do subtraction, if you have multiplication, you do division, if you have a root, you would do an exponent, or an exponent, you'd have a, you'd do a root. And so you do the opposite, again, of whatever level you are currently in, in order to move it to the other side of the equation. All right, so again, we're going to try to get rid of this b right here, and we're going to put it on the other side of the equation by subtracting it from both sides. And so it cancels out on the right side of the equation, and now we have a minus b on the left side of the equation. All right, now we need to go and we need to take care of be either multiplication or division. We have no division in this equation, so we're just gonna do the multiplication. Remember, we are trying to isolate the C, so we always have to look and see how things relate to the letter C. In this equation, this entire argument here is being multiplied by C. So what we can do is divide everything by that in order to move to the other side of the equation. And so we are going to be dividing this side of the equation by d times the, within parentheses, e minus f. So when we do it over here, we also have to, to divide this entire thing by the d, by d e minus f in parentheses. And so what that essentially looks like though, is we have to add some parentheses if we're gonna keep it all in one line like this. So we have to do a minus b first, and then we can do this function that we moved onto the other side, which will also be done in isolation, and then you divide the two by each other. And so what you end up with is a minus b done by itself, divided by what you moved over, so d times e minus f. All right, and so now we do have our C all by itself, so what we can do is we can actually fill out the rest of these variables with the numbers that are given to you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do that now. We end up with an equation that looks like this right here. All right, so the next step is to switch. So we've been following the order of operations for rearranging the formula, which remember goes in the opposite direction. But now we don't need to rearrange the formula anymore or the equation anymore. So we're going to follow the typical order of operations for solving or calculating a value. And so it goes back in this order, starting with parentheses and working our way down. So now looking at this equation, we actually have multiple sets of parentheses. And we have these brackets right here that actually work essentially as parentheses. It's just a different looking set of parentheses so you can see what parentheses go with what. All right, and so what we need to do is we need to start from the innermost parentheses and work our way out. And so the first thing we need to do is do eight minus three to get five, and that's what we do here. And then we can go, or work our, again, work our way outside of that first set of parentheses. So we can multiply four times five, and we can also subtract 102 minus two. And so we end up getting 100 divided by 20. When we do that, simple math, again, working our way down the order of operations, now we are on, so we've been doing the parentheses. We don't have any of this here. We are now going to be working on just the division, which is what we have left. So 100 divided by 20 is five. So C equals five. So let's go ahead and do one more example that's slightly more complicated because now we're going to uh, use e as our unknown variable. And notice that e is within the parentheses right here. So it does add a slight complication to it, but it's pretty similar to what we just did. All right, so again, we're going to start rearranging for e. And since we're rearranging, we're going to follow this order of operations. So starting by uh, removing anything that is addition or subtraction 
with E as what we are trying to isolate. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of this B right here, which is added on this side of the equation. So we're gonna subtract B from both sides of the equation, and we're gonna end up with A minus B equals the rest of what was on that side. All right, so we took care of our addition. We have no subtraction. So now we need to take care of our multiplication and division. And we're looking at, again, we're trying to solve for E. So what is either multiplying against E or dividing against E? So we have all this right here that's multiplying into E eventually. So we have C times D, both of which are going to be multiplied into E. So we need to get rid of the C and the D. So how do we do that? All right, so right now it's multiplication, so we need to go and do the opposite of that, which is division. So we're going to divide both sides of the equation by C times D. And because we want C times D to be divided into all of this, we're going to go ahead and put parentheses around that. So we end up with A minus B in parentheses divided by C times D in parentheses. And what we have on the other side still is E minus F. I notice I got rid of these parentheses right here because there's nothing else on that side, so it's unnecessary. So how do we rearrange this last part of the equation to isolate the E? We have E minus F, so we have subtraction. We need to add F to both sides of the equation. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It's going to cancel out on the right side, and we end up with that equation on the left side. All right, so now that we have our equation rearranged, isolating E, we need to go ahead and fill in the equation with our known variables. So let's go and do that. So we end up getting this. And now we can start to solve the calculation. Remember, we're switching back away from this rearranging order of operations into the calculation order of operations. So first thing you do when you are doing a calculation is you start with the parentheses. All right, so we have two sets of parentheses here and we can do them in the same step if we want. So we have 100 minus two, which is gonna give us 100, right? And we have five times four, which is gonna give us 20. So if we go ahead and do that, we end up with 100 divided by 20 plus the original three that was there. And what's the next step? So we don't have any exponents, we don't have any roots here, so we don't take care of that. But we do have um, some division, we don't have any multiplication. So let's go ahead and take care of this division. So 100 divided by 20 is gonna give us five. So we have five plus three equals E. And so we go ahead and do our last step, which is our addition or subtraction. Again, we only have addition, so we'll just do addition here. So five plus three equals eight, so E is equal to eight. And so now we have go, we've gone ahead and solved for E. So this is just a couple examples. We didn't do anything super complicated, but we also did some things that are a little more advanced than what you might need in some situations. So hopefully from this and your other basic math course that you've taken, you'll be able to then do the various calculations you need to do in your various courses or in whatever it is you're doing. I hope this helped. It's gonna be very helpful to understand some of the other calculations-based videos that I do for my exercise science class. Classes. We're going to be showing you how to calculate various things that you're going to, have to do in things like personal training and that kind of thing. So please come back and watch another video and thanks for watching this one.